Today, our guest is Jean Watson. Nobody knew who I was, so the church went out into the streets and they picked up the homeless people and they bribed them with coffee and sandwiches to come hear an American lady sing. Share the gospel clear and strong. Stand for, claim your heritage of truth. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today, our guest is Jean Watson. Welcome, Jean. Thank you for having me. You are a bit unusual as a musician. <laughs> you sing. Yes. And you fiddle. <laughs> But not at the same time. So you're a, a classically trained singer and violinist. That's right, yes. I started playing violin when I was seven, and then pursued education as a classical violinist. And then it was only later I discovered I could sing. And, um, and I just love all styles of music, so when the Lord called me into music ministry, I just wanted to incorporate my classical background, but not, mm -hmm. not get stuck in that genre. So, so yeah. I do more of a popular music style, but mm -hmm. I certainly use my classical roots as well. That's good. I love, I love a classical bent to the more modern mm -hmm. music. That's great. So uh, you have a new album out called Christmas Not the Way It Seems. Now, do you have violin on this too? In there's a lot of violin. Singing, a lot yep, of violin. There's a lot of violin. If I'm not singing, I'm probably playing. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> and you said you did this with Phil Kagey? I did. Phil got involved on one of the songs. I I had, um, it wasn't a, a real dream, but I had been to one of Phil's concerts the Christmas before I made this, and so his sound was kind of in the back of my head, and as we were working on one of the songs, Do You Hear What I Hear, I could just, I was sort of picturing his style of guitar playing mm -hmm. in the back of my mind as I was arranging it, so I just mentioned it to the producer, I said, I'm this, this is the type of sound I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, let's just call Phil. So we called Phil, and I never expected him to actually get involved, but he, had, he ended up recording the song with me, and it was phenomenal. And then we did a music video together, and a combination of his guitar artistry and my violin playing and the voice was just magical. Oh, it wow. It really fit together. I can't wait to see that. Where can people find yeah. that? It's on YouTube if you just... Google Phil Kagi and Jean Watson. Okay. You'll see it. Mm -hmm. Great. You have a really large fan base in the UK. How did that happen? Well, probably in a backwards kind of way. I always dreamed that I'd go there someday when I was a child. Mm -hmm. I had dreams about going to England and Ireland. And then I became a Christian when I was in college. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of followed a different path in life, set music aside, got married and had a family. And, um, you know, just started raising children. That was the focus of my life mm -hmm. for the next several years. Eventually, the marriage ended in divorce, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So I found myself, um, instead of pursuing the road to my dreams, it was just a matter of survival, really. Mm -hmm. You know, just trying to feed the kids and stay afloat emotionally. I was really depressed and mm -hmm. sad about where I was in life. And at that time, I cried out to God and asked Him to help me get back on the track. And as an answer to that prayer, um, suddenly some strange doors started opening. I was just asking him to help me survive. Mm -hmm. And someone heard me sing. Um, my landlord heard me sing by accident. Uh -huh. He ended up giving me money, gave me my rent money back and encouraged me to record. So at that very low point in my life, um, I started recording. And someone else gave me an opportunity to play the violin professionally. Mm -hmm. So here I was, the Lord put me back on a road to healing. Within three years, I was playing and singing, not only in this nation, but my recordings were heard in England. And so I started touring over there, mm -hmm. and traveling from church to church and prisons and homeless shelters and coffee houses. And I started to establish um, just, I guess you'd call it a fan base, mm -hmm. although many of my fans were incarcerated or, <laughs> or really having problems emotionally. But the Lord was just using me in those really dark places. So and you got to minister to people who needed it. That's what I started doing, and yeah. so I just traveled back and forth and eventually into Ireland, and now here I am back in the United States. So what other albums do you have besides this one? This is That was actually the sixth, and I have made another one since then. Mm -hmm. So I've made seven. A lot of different styles, you know, I, and I've kind of experimented with using orchestral music. Some of them are more Celtic than others. Mm -hmm. Some of them are more popular, and... Um, 
So I, I don't know what to say except that, that if, you, if you start listening to the music, you just hear a wide variety of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's now I've sort of settled into a vein that's pop music is very upbeat, and um, but it has a little Celtic flair to it. And if you listen carefully, you'll always hear a little bit of my classical roots. That's good. That sounds like yeah. sounds like it'd be very pleasant to listen to. It's something for everybody. Yeah, good. Well, um, you have performed in majestic cathedrals, and in theaters, and symphony, and. Also prisons and red light districts. Yes. My goodness. On a typical trip, are you doing all of these things or what? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I just go wherever I'm invited. Mm -hmm. I don't ask to be paid. You know, I just go where I really sense the doors are opening, where God's calling me to go. And he's always provided the way. And for me, you know, the satisfying part is the connection with the audience, whether it be in a concert hall or on a street corner, or in a homeless shelter, if I'm able to connect with the audience and see that God's using the music or something that I'm saying to really touch someone's heart and give them hope, or or just switch on a light, you know, somewhere in their heart that um, maybe things can be different for them, mm -hmm. the way God changed things in my life. That just that just really really gets me excited. Mm -hmm. If I play a concert. And then after the concert, someone says to me, oh, you just have a beautiful voice. Thank you so much for singing. Then I think, wow, I just, I really, I must not have been on my game tonight. But if I leave the event and someone comes up to me and says that, that God spoke to them and their life was changed in some way, then, then uh, my heart's satisfied. I feel like I did what God sent me to do. And I just always want to feel, when I go a step out on stage, oh, Lord, I, I like to pray that, that the Lord, that I'll just not be in his way, that people will just see him and not me and almost forget that I'm, not, that I'm there. I want them to see Christ in me, really hear his voice when I'm speaking and really feel his spirit when I'm playing or singing. And so that's the fun of it, that wherever I go, I just get to watch him work. When I was first getting my feet wet in ministry, I didn't know what I was doing and I thought this was about me playing music, you know, entertaining people and sharing my music and a little my story. And uh, one of my first concerts in England, nobody knew who I was. So the church went out into the streets and they picked up the homeless people and they bribed them with coffee and sandwiches to come hear an American lady sing. So my, m one of my first audiences was sitting there like this and they stank, they really didn't want to be there. And um, you know, I was really feeling the love. But as I played and sang that night and shared some of my story, you could just see their hearts being touched by God. And at the end of the concert, I offered um, a short prayer that if anyone wanted to come forward to, to pray with me, I would be available. Well, up runs this man to the front, and he was just shaking, and he said he was sitting on the front row, and he said he was an atheist his whole life. He didn't want to come to the concert. He just came for the food. But somewhere in the middle of the concert, God touched his heart. And he just knew that the Lord was real. He didn't know why, but his heart was just changed. And uh, so I prayed with him then to invite the Lord into his heart and, um, and to walk out of there a different person than he'd come in. And that was just amazing. And then the person after him was a little girl named Charlotte who was hearing impaired. She was mm -hmm. losing her hearing. Doctors couldn't figure out why, and she was almost deaf. And her father says to me, he says, Charlotte believes if you pray for her, she'll be healed. And I'm thinking, I'm just a violin player. I don't know anything about healing ministry. You know, I think, you know, I'm in the wrong place. But I thought, well, Lord, I'm all that you have to use. So I just put my hands on her ears, prayed a short blessing over her. And at that moment, I just felt the power of God go through her body. And I can't really describe it to you, except that it felt like a million volts of electricity. It just wow. was this power. And... Um, just kind of blew me back a ways. And after the prayer, we looked at each other and we both knew that she had been healed. Wow. Just like, just boom. And, uh, and it just, that night really changed my life because I knew that all of those years of practicing the violin and learning how to sing and write songs and go to all the trouble of getting to England, that it, this, this is what it was about, it was about bringing the kingdom of God to anyone who would listen and that Jesus was just displaying his life 
through the hands of a violinist and through the mouth of a singer. And so that's what I that's what I live to do until the Lord calls me home. It's just shine his light through music and through the word and it's nothing I'd rather be doing. I'm just kind oh, of skip great. back and watch him work, yeah. That's great. Well, I'm not going to make you talk much longer okay. because I don't want you to lose your voice because you have to sing tomorrow. Yeah. But where can people find you online? Well, I have a website, jeanwatson.com, and I try to stay current on the website. It's hard for me because I'm traveling a lot and I'm, and I'm busy, but I also post things regularly on my Facebook page, which is Jean Watson Music. There's lots of video on YouTube, my testimony on 700 Club and different mm-hmm. performances and interviews and things like that. So if you put my name in on YouTube, you'll certainly see me there as well. But okay. I love to interact with people all over the Internet. So that's they'll great. come and find me. Well, you're singing for the right reasons. And so, you know, keep it up. And Thank you. And may God bless your ministry. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Share